guys. So we always have people asking us, how did you get Thor? How did you get Lola? How did you get Aphrodite? So today we're going to do a special video telling the stories of how we ended up with all our animals. Well, the mammals anyway. Um, let's hope they sit still <laughs> since they're a big part of the video, but they might get mad if I hold them here for a little while. But let's start with Aphrodite since she is now the oldest animal that we have. I got Aphrodite when I was a sophomore in high school. Say hi, Aphrodite. She's like, why are you holding me? You're such a bitch. I just want to go lay down in the bed and be comfortable. So I got Aphrodite from my friend Emma. You've actually met her in our vlogs before. She was one of my best friends growing up, and her parents lived on a farm. And um, on this farm, they had a... Da, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, on this farm, they had uh, barn cats you know, to take care of the mice in the barns and stuff, and her barn cats, you know, would always reproduce, have kittens and stuff. And one day I was in school, and Emma said that she had a barn cat who had kittens that actually like people. And oftentimes barn cats, kittens, they're feral, and they're just kind of wild cats, you know. So she said that she wanted the kittens to go to a home, a good home, and live with people. And I actually had lost a cat uh, a year before that, my cat Xena, I loved her very much and her death was pretty hard on me actually. So I thought that I was ready to have a new cat in my life. So I told Emma that I would like to have one of these kittens and she said that uh, the one that she has left is gray but it has... <laughs> She's so mad right now. I'm sorry Aphrodite, you know it's not that big of a deal. And she said that her tail is messed up. Um, and she has a short tail and she asked if I mind and I was like, of course I don't mind. Okay, I was just trying to show them your tail. Stop being a grumpy cat. She's gonna bite me. Tiffany's coming out. And I said, of course I don't mind. But actually her tail is funny like that because uh, she was born that way and her bones are actually in a knot at the end. Kind of weird, huh? So if you feel it, you can feel the bones twisted around. So one day after school, I went to Emma's farm and I picked up Aphrodite. Now, I actually lied to my mom. I didn't ask my mom if I could get Aphrodite first. So um, she came home from work and she saw me playing with a little gray kitten. And I said, Mom, you don't understand. I found this kitten wandering alongside the highway. And I just knew she would get hit by a car if I didn't take her. So I had to. I couldn't just let her die. And my mom said, Okay, well, I'll think about it and maybe you can keep her. And obviously, I ended up keeping her because I still have her today. Aphrodite, I love you. I'm sorry that you're all grumpy right now. <laughs> so um, after high school, I left her with my mom for a couple months to take care of her when I moved out to California. And then I flew Aphrodite out here and she was living with me in my apartment for a while before I moved in with John. So I never really had the whole like college experience of living in a dorm and stuff because my animals are so important to me I didn't want to live without my animals I didn't want to just abandon them so um, I lived in an apartment instead of living in a dorm so that I could have my pets out here with me and Aphrodite I will let you go now <laughs> you're such a brat <laughs> goodbye so this is Kenobi I uh, forgot to mention Thor's about six Kenobi's about seven and a half. I've had him for a while. I got Kenobi in Colorado. Um, he's actually a rescue dog. And um, I wanted a dog really bad. I was living with my brother at the time in Breckenridge, Colorado. We were kind of ski bums. And my brother said I couldn't get a dog because we couldn't actually have a dog um, on our lease. But I've been going to the Humane Society for about six months. Um, and I walked in one day and they, I actually saw them bringing Kenobi in off the truck. Um, and he had to go into like a week of quarantine and another week of holding to see if his owner claimed him and nobody actually claimed him so I went and visited him a bunch and I kind of fell in love with him um, and he was a great great dog he was in really rough shape he weighed about um, 68 pounds or 67 pounds I think um, and they told me they actually found him on top of a mountain pass they figured that somebody abandoned him on the top of the mountain pass and he was on his own for about a month or two um, he was kind of covered in scabs and blood and they gave him a bath and he had this beautiful white coat that he sheds just an unbelievable amount. You can actually see how much he sheds. Isn't that right, Kenobi? Yeah, I'm a big shedder. 
Oh, look at that. It's just terrible. I could get that much hair off him by just scratching his butt because it's summer. Um, but he's been a great dog. He's a great guard dog. He's a good protector. Um, him and Thor get along great. Some of the funniest things I've ever seen two dogs do have been Kenobi and Thor just playing around with each other in the yard when I first got him. Um, but Thor really mellowed Kenobi out and Kenobi really kind of cooled Thor down. And they're both just fantastic dogs and I love them to death. One of the funniest things Kenobi's ever done was when I first got him, um, I actually, I got, my brother was gone, gone in Minnesota when I got Kenobi and I was actually going home to Minnesota and my brother was coming back and we weren't going to see each other because we'd both be traveling. So I got Kenobi and I left him at our house. Me and my brother were actually sharing a room at that time when we lived in Colorado. Um, and when he got home Kenobi, and walked into the room, he said he's found the biggest pile of poop that he's ever seen in his life. And he looked over and Kenobi was sitting on his bed just shaking like violently at it and he was like, oh god, that's the biggest dog. I've ever seen the biggest pile of poop I've ever seen. I don't know what to do. So he called me and he was like, whose dog is this? And I was like, it's my dog. Do you like him? His name's Kenobi. He was like, he took a crap on the floor the size of a dinner plate. And I was like, oh my God, that's so funny. Uh, please clean it up. But, and that was kind of how my brother got introduced to Kenobi. And he's been a great dog. I used to take him skiing with me when I lived in Colorado. I'd go on the mountain passes and ski. Um, and he'd run down the mountain passes with me and he just absolutely loved it. He loves being in Minnesota in the winter. He likes being at the cabin in the summer. And that's all the hair that I just pulled off of him when I was talking to you guys. Look at him. He's like, oh, don't stop. Please. Seriously. Don't stop. You go, Bowie. Now here is Miss Lola. She should be a little bit better about me holding her throughout this video. Because she loves when her mommy holds her, don't you? My little princess. Mm. So I got Lola when I was 20 years old. I was living downtown Los Angeles with my, well not downtown, I lived right across the street from the Grove, if you know where that place is. Um, and, the Le, and the La Brea Tar Pits was right across the street from my house. But I was living with my friend April, and one day, April brought home a duckling. A duckling around Easter time. There's a place in Los Angeles called the Fashion District. It's where they sell like fake purses and things like that. And around Easter time, we had some friends out from our hometown and I wasn't with them at the Fashion District. They were out with April and they saw some guy with a wagon selling little baby ducklings. And my roommate brought this duckling home. So we had a pet duck in our apartment for a while and I was the one who ended up taking care of it. My roommate said that she was afraid that the duck would die and then our friends were like, well, we'll tell Nikki that you didn't save this duck if you don't buy it. So yeah, I was the one who cleaned up and fed the duck and stuff and we had a pet duck in our apartment. And let me tell you what, it is nothing like friends. Oh my gosh, ducks are so messy. When they eat, they go like this. They go, hum, and they throw their food all over the walls. So we would ha constantly have to bleach our walls. And um, the cage, it would just poop so much. And we would let this duck swim in our bathtub and stuff. But the duck was living in like um, one of those big dog kennels. So I felt really bad for it. And I thought, you know, an apartment is no place for a duck to live. The duck should live with other ducks where it can swim in a pond and walk around. So I was actually trying to find a petting zoo at first for this duck to live because I raised it to like people, uh, but those ended up falling through all my contacts with that. So I ended up contacting the Humane Society and I asked if they uh, knew any place I could give this duck to, someone who takes in birds or something. And uh, they took down my number and they called me back and said that they found a bird sanctuary for the duck to live on. And I actually, I needed to come in and surrender him, but they said the duck will be fine. They already have a place for him. So I went down to the Humane Society and we surrendered the duck and I was not planning on getting a dog at all. But when we were in the Humane Society, it was the West LA Animal Shelter, and oh my gosh, it's just so sad. The shelter is so crowded with cats and dogs. Lola was in there, and I overheard two workers talking about the dog next to her, and they were saying, oh, everybody wants to adopt this dog, there's people bidding on it. And then they pointed to Lola, and they said, but nobody wants this dog. She's here for, she's been here for a while, and she's actually sick. And I looked at her, and I said, well, I want her. I'll take her. Mm. 
So um, it was kind of a impulse decision, but I ended up adopting Lola that day. And I gave her her medicine and she got all better. And I'm just so happy she's in my life. I couldn't imagine my life without Lola. She's so wonderful. But she was actually really, really shy when I got her because she was a stray. She was wandering around the streets of LA. So tough little chihuahua, huh? from the LA streets. But she wouldn't come out of my closet for like a month. You know, she'd come out when I gave her food, but she would just hide in there most of the time. And I'd have to sit there and give her treats and be like, hey, Lola, I'm nice. And it wasn't really until John came out here and brought his dogs that Lola really came out of her shell and learned that people are okay because John's dogs love people so much. So backtracking a little bit, this was right before John was about to move out to California and move in with me. So I texted him a picture right after I adopted Lola and I said, look, Thor has a girlfriend. And John says, cute, whose dog is that? And I type back, it's my dog. And John's like, well, we're moving in together. Didn't you think about asking me before I got a dog? And I texted back, yeah, I thought about it, but I knew you'd say no, so I just got her anyway. <laughs> so I guess this is a trend for me. If I want a pet, I'm gonna get a pet. And John said, well, you know, I have two dogs already, so it might have, I probably would have said no. Yeah, you're right. But now John absolutely loves Lola. I'm sure he couldn't imagine a life without Lola either, and all the dogs love each other so much. So we're just one big happy family. I don't know if he's growling at me tickling him or Kenobi licking his wiener. That's disgusting. Get out of here, Kenobi. This is Thor. Everybody knows Thor. Don't lick me. He's everybody's favorite little dog. Uh, he's a rat terrier. And I got him. He's actually my second dog. Kenobi was my first dog. And I got him when I was uh, living in Colorado in Fort Collins. A friend of mine, Alex, who lived in Fort Collins, uh, knew this girl who had Thor. Um, and she had three or four cats at the time, and she really, really, really liked cats. Um, and she just loved everything about cats. And so she got Thor because she thought that she loved animals and not just cats. And she got Thor, and it turns out that she hates dogs. And I was over there one day talking to her um, with my friend Alex, and I saw Thor, and I was throwing the ball for him for like 20 minutes straight, and I was like, man, this is the greatest little dog ever. And she was like, really? Do you want him? And I was like, Sure. She's like, well, you can have him. I was like, really? I was like, well, I'll take him. And she just gave me Thor. His name was Spunky at the time, which was kind of a silly name. Um, so I changed his name to Thor, and I took him home, and he met Kenobi, and they absolutely loved each other. It was really funny. The first winter I had Thor, I got a little sweater for him, and I put him outside in the yard. Uh, and Kenobi grabbed him by the sweater and started swinging him in circles like he was Superman. And Thor was going in circles like this, like, eee! And Kenobi was just spinning as fast as he could. And Thor finally came flying out of the sweater and flew off into the distance and, like, landed. And Kenobi has had this sweater and was just playing with it and throwing it around. And it was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. And then Kenobi ran back over to Thor and started spinning in circles on top of him as fast as he could. And Thor was cowered underneath Kenobi, just like, eee! and Kenobi was just spinning on top of him in circles really, really fast. Um, and it was really funny. So that's how I got Thor. And I've had him ever since. He's been a great dog. He loves chasing the ball. It says, Thor, where's the ball? Where's the ball? Go get your ball. That's his favorite thing to do on the planet. His ball is probably underneath the couch right now. He's going to want me to go get it. Go get your squishy ball. Get the big squishy ball. Oh, good boy. There it is. Come on. Yeah, yes, good boy. So he throws me, the, he brings me the ball, and I throw it for him. That's what we do all day. So next we have Mojo. Oh. And this is Bengal, aka Mama Kitty. Meow, Mama Kitty. So in case you can't tell, I really love animals. I met Mojo and Bengal, aka Mama Kitty, uh, hanging around our neighborhood as strays, eating trash. And I came up to them one day with cat food and I said, hey guys, you want some real cat food? And Mojo and Mama Kitty were friends. So they kind of looked out for each other and they would find food together and they'd always rub up against each other. And I started feeding them. And eventually I earned their trust by continuing to feed them and then they eventually they let me pet them and everything. 
So I believe that you should show animals kindness and um, I just, I, I want to rescue everything that's just kind of in my nature. I want to rescue as many animals as I can. So I have been feeding Bojo and Mama Kitty every single day and putting water outside since we moved here four years ago. So now they are outside cats. We care a lot about them. We've taken them to the vet and everything. They live in a, a hole in our roof. You know, they're always at our house 24 seven. And we just, we love them a lot. We'll always take care of them. We'll care for them. We'll always make sure that they're all right. This is Gizmo. Some of you guys will probably remember Gizmo. She was in our kitten watch vlog. She's actually Bangle's kitten. Bangle is the stray cat that We've acquired outside, who's now one of our outside cats. We call her Mama Cat, because she had four kittens. Uh, Gizmo went to actually live with my friend Matt, and Matt ended up not being able to take her and keep her, which was kind of a disappointment. So she came back here because we didn't want her to go to a shelter or get dumped anywhere. Uh, and we ended up keeping Gizmo because we kind of fell in love with her. And she's really cute, she's really funny, she's a really sassy cat. She doesn't really like to be held, so. I'm doing this video not holding her, uh, but she's really cute. She's really talkative when she's hungry and she doesn't have food. She's probably one of the cutest cats in the world. She'll kind of like sprint around you in circles and like meow really cute and follow you and tell you give her food and it's just really, really funny. And she licks herself excessively, which is another one of her traits. Oh yeah, there we go. Lick it up, Gizmo. Lick it up. Um, but I don't know, she's a great little cat. You know, we really like having her around. Gizmo! Licking my finger. Oh. Gizmo cam. <laughs> and that's how we became the Brady Bunch. But with animals. <laughs> Always remember guys that I love you and stay tuned for more vlogs. Mwah!